Good afternoon, and thank everybody for. I want to thank everybody for coming this afternoon. Um, we have a prepared statement, and there'll be some other speakers that will talk in regards to actually what this means to the city of Pittsfield and Berkshire County. Uh, the decision by Judge Ponzer, which was Friday afternoon, and I'll start with. Uh, by now, I hope news about the recent approval of the consent decree, which is a huge victory for all of us. I called this press conference for two reasons. To thank many of the people who worked tirelessly to negotiate a landmark agreement that has been, let, has been thoroughly reviewed and approved within the legal system, and to talk about what will happen next. First, I want to thank the folks from the Environmental Protection Agency for providing leadership and technical expertise. They looked out for our interest with regard to the 400-page legal document, the consent decree, and the two-foot-high stack of technical attachments. Dean, that was uh, no small task, because I know that we have that big pile down there, but I trusted you would look through that thoroughly. And they will continue to watch out for us as they oversee the complex cleanup of the GE Business Center in the heart of the Berkshires, as well as the first half mile of the Housatonic in the next mile and a half. Next, I want to thank the other government agencies and 21 signatories to the consent decree. I'll admit negotiating with so many people at the table got challenging at times, but in the final analysis, we needed all the involvement to create a fair settlement consistent with statutory objectives, objectives in the public's best interest. Next, I'd like to thank the elected officials who worked so hard for us in Washington and in Boston. Some were able to make it here today or send staff members. Some of them speak to you in a few minutes. The key point is that while we had differences of opinions during the years that we grappled with how to solve the cleanup problem, in the end, your elected officials worked hard to get required legislation passed. For an example, Peter Larkin led the way to create the Brownsfield legislation and the legislation that created the Pittsfield Economic Development. And that was supported by our entire delegation and our state senators. Senator, critical elements of the plan we now have in place. And I also want to thank them for listening to the people who elected them and doing what they could to keep things on track. I would also appreciate all the input from the private citizens, homeowners, business owners and business leaders, environmentalists, parents, teachers, a long, long list. I think this was a real big and a real hard problem to solve. And as a united community, we're on the right road to clean up to the cleanup that will improve the living conditions and economic health in the Berkshires. I think we need to recognize what General Electric has been doing since we reached the agreement in principle September of 1988 and got a consent decree approval in October 2000. GE has been, GE has been removing PCB contamin, contaminated sediments in bank soils for the first half mile of the Housatonic River since fall of 1999. GE removed more than 4,400 cubic yards of river sediments and 2,200 cubic yards of bank soil. At the Allendale Elementary School, GE removed 41,000 cubic yards of con contaminated soil from the school's playground. When the property was restored, GE installed new recreational equipment and athletic facilities. GE is working to mitigate all potential sources of contamination to the river. In 1999, this resulted in 40,000 gallons of oil being removed and 50 million gallons of groundwater being treated. So where do we go from here? Now that we have a consent decree in place, the PETA board can move forward on a development of a master plan for the GE site. The intent of the master planning process is to provide clear focus and factual information as to the magnitude and character of the redevelopment activity that the site can, be, can accommodate. It will be necessary for civil engineers, planners, economic, economists, surveyors, appraisers, and landscape architects, among others, to examine the site's potential. The, ch the challenge confronting each of these professionals will be devising a redevelopment plan that reestablishes public confidence and excitement in Pittsfield's ability to rejuvenate itself by providing its residents in the regional business community with economic opportunities. PETA, with the assistance of mass development, is focused on developing a plan that is consistent with the existing industrial commercial market and responsive to the development needs that exist within Berkshire County. PETA will use funding of $100,000 from the EPA Superfund Redevelopment Grant, 
which they wisely didn't begin to use until the consent decree was entered to start the master plan development. PETA and mass development have an ambitious and doable schedule. They will request proposals in mid-November and select a talented consulting team to work with the board and the community as a whole in producing a development plan that will ultimately transform this brownfield site into the commercial industrial hub of the Berkshires. The planning work will commence in early December and is anticipated to take six months to complete. Now let me give you a brief overview of what you can expect to see happen now that the consent decree has been filed. At its own expense, GE will perform minor refurbishments at the guardhouse, the electrical substation, and the wastewater treatment system buildings. At its own expense, GE will demolish all other buildings and property and properly dispose of the demolition debris. After GE finishes the demolition, it will ensure that at least 30, 350,000 square feet of building foundations or areas building foundations in at least eight separate sites remains upon which PETA can direct the construction of new buildings. GE will ensure that such foundations and or foundation areas are reasonably located and suitable in all respects to support new, reasonably priced buildings. GE will bear all expenses related to soil management, compaction, and stability issues to ensure the guaranteed amount of suitable foundation area. This should potentially trans translate into 700 to 100 million square feet of new building space or more. Redevelopment Fund. GE will make 15,300,000 available to PETA to be used for any purpose related to the redevelopment of the transferred property. GE will make 10 annual $1 million payments to the city of Pittsfield. If PETA secures a tenant prior to newly building being ready for such tenant, GE will lease at no cost up to 100,000 square feet of space for up to six years to PETA to accommodate that tenant. PETA will be responsible for all costs such as, uh, of such space. PETA has 18 months to exercise this option. GE will lease the four-acre parking lot located behind Building 45 at the corner of Woodlawn Avenue and Kellogg Street to PETA for its use for its tenants. The lease will be a minimum of 25 years and will be at no cost to PETA or its tenants. GE will continue to provide PETA with 3,000 square feet of office space at no cost for up to for up to a period of five years. Bless you. <laughs> GE will spend a substantial sum not drawn from PETA funds to extensively landscape the transferred property and surrounding areas such as the 60s complex in Silver Lake and to construct athletic fields at the corner of East and Newell Street. After construction of the fields, GE will lease the city, lease back to the city at no cost. GE will transfer to PETA in two phases consisting of approximately 52 acres, and this is 14 more than originally proposed. GE will modify the property transfer sequence if PETA so desires, as long as costs are not materially affected. PETA may not transfer fee title in the land within five years immediately following its receipt of such land from GE. After five years, PETA may transfer fee title in the land with GE's written approval, provided that the buyer agrees to abide by any use restrictions, provides GE with a release, obtains insurance, demonstrates financial viability, and agrees to provide access and property <clears throat> to the governments. After 15 years, PETA may transfer fee title without GE's written approval. There's a little bit more to this, but I think it's important that each and every one of you know in this room the really the, the, um, the guts of this whole consent decree because uh, there's press packets out there, you really need to look through them because this information has been just headlined and it's never been um, talked about in its entirety. And it's very important for people to understand the magnitude of, of what's happened here. PETA may transfer title to any new building exclusive to land of which it is situated after only 18 months from the date of signing, provided that the buyer agrees to the requirements set forth above. In addition, Immediately after transfer of any property to PETA, PETA will be entitled to lease it. Neither PETA nor the city may exercise eminent domain authority with respect to GE property for at least seven years. After seven years, if PETA and the city takes any GE property, GE will remain responsible for performing the groundwater and not equipment phased liquids related activities of such as required by the consent decree as well as any claims arising out of the pre-taking exposure to the contamination and or from the property. 
With respect to the transferred property, G will remain responsible for the following. Performing prior to the transfer of the remediation required by the consent decree, performing the continuing groundwater and apple related activities required by the consent decree, off-site mitigation of contamination unless caused by PETA or someone not controlled or invited onto the GE site. For 15 years, soil and groundwater issues related to utility corridors, corridors for the provision of steam, water, electricity, gas, fiber, optics, or similar telecommunication systems capable of providing high-speed internet, telephone, and similar services for off-site disposal or waste or soil or prior, prior to transfer. GE will indemnify PETA for all claims arising from the responsibilities retain, retained by GE set forth above. PETA will indemnify GE for claims arising out of the environmental responsibilities not retained by GE, including additional remedial, remedial requirements after transfer not caused by GE negligence, tort liability, off-site mitigation of contamination caused by PETA, damage caused by PETA's interference with a remedy, PETA maintenance and operation of the property and unknown, unknown issues unless GE withheld material information. I'm not worried about that with the PETA board. They have all that under control. Dan Schmutty and the rest of the crew there. Dan, we're not worried about that, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> GE will indemnify the city from all claims arising out of the city having provided PCB contaminated sewage sludge for its use on residential properties. The city agrees not to sue GE regarding contamination of the transferred properties, contamination migrating from the transferred property onto property not owned by the city, and contamination at city-owned property that is being remediated under the consent, consent decree once GE complies with the remediation measures set forth in the consent decree. Regarding contamination at a city-owned property that is not being remediated under the consent decree, the city and GE have agreed upon an expedited arbitration procedure to resolve any claims brought by the city against GE. GE agrees not to sue the city for any claim arising from PETA's acts or, or obligations. PETA must obtain the following environmental health and safety insurance from the transferred property. $50,000, 50 million dollars to the aggregate with deductible not to exceed one million. PETA must obtain the following con comprehensive general liability insurance. Five million per occurrence, 10 million annual aggregate. GE will have a limited option to repossess transferred property. If PETA is unable to meet the financial obligations of property, it's being used inconsistently with its use restriction. Now, I said a lot there, but it's, it, there's a lot of uh, meat and potatoes to that, that whole uh, little bio that we went over there. There's more packets available, but I think that uh, these are the type of things that uh, people did not realize the extent of the, um, the uh, negotiations. And as we talked uh, in Judge Ponzer's chambers uh, a week ago, or last Friday, uh, these negotiations were held, uh, as the judge uh, so nicely put it, as arm's length negotiations. There was no kind of uh, fun uh, at these negotiations for two years. And there's a lot of folks that are sitting right in this room that I know I have and Tom Hickey has. Uh, we left that room thinking I'm not speaking to that person again. And uh, it worked out in everybody's best interest because we all came back to the table several times knowing um, that um, we, we had a deal that was good for everybody. Uh, one important thing that I remember the most uh, out of uh, the negotiations is a year ago September, uh, former uh, Attorney General Scott Harshbarger sat at the Crown Plaza and stood up and said, the city of Pittsfield, the agencies, GE and their attorneys have saved the city of Pittsfield in excess of 10 years of litigation, more litigation, in excess of hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. And, and that came from the Attorney General. So we felt that uh, by reaching this compromise that, that it was good for everybody. And at the end of the day, when Judge Ponzer made his ruling Friday, I think it's, uh, it would be duly noted that the citizens of the city of Pittsfield did not pay one nickel for our legal team uh, to be at these hearings. These dollars, which was in excess of $400,000, was paid for by grants from the EPA, DEP, and General Electric. And I don't think a lot of people know that, and I think that's an important thing uh, to, to note. But all in all, I can tell you, as I told some people the other day, um, for two years, 
this went on that I was directly involved in. It's been going on 10 years before that, that's for sure. And uh, I can't thank um, Council President Hickey and our legal team for the work they've done. And there's speakers that I will, um, th that uh, will come before you shortly. Uh, I can't thank them enough either. But um, at the end of the day, two years went by. Uh, there was ups and downs for a lot of people. Without the support of the people in this room, this would never, never have happened. And the support from the general public uh, as a whole. After the two years, I wasn't nervous one day. I was mad a lot of times. We swore a lot uh, in the, you know, on the way home in the car. Tom and I, it was real late at night. It's, it's really irritating when GE planes fly over you, but you can't get in them because it's over $50, and you're driving back and forth. But um, the only time I was nervous, and that was Friday. And uh, I was petrified to be sitting there Friday because not knowing what was going to happen. But uh, when the judge made his ruling, I know that there was some hard feelings by some of the folks and their attorneys as the interveners were. But I think in the end, uh, if we can work out a massive compromise like we have that we feel uh, is a national model, I think we can work out the uh, other few problems that we have uh, with, with some of the business owners and some of the residents along the river because I know that um, I support these people. Um, I've, I've had calls pro and con obviously over the last couple of years. But the important thing to remember is what I said the Attorney General said. At least 10 more years of litigation and hundreds of thousands of dollars that would be paid in fees and still no end in sight. With that being said, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm going to make some introductions of some other people that um, that uh, would like to speak and, and deserve to speak, and I'll close up in a few more minutes. Uh, thanks for your time this afternoon. First of all, I'd like to introduce Deb Glacklione, and she's going to speak on behalf of uh, U.S. Senator Edward Kennedy, U.S. Senator John Kerry, and Congressman John Olver. Debbie. I have big shoes to fill today, and I'm not going to even try. But before I begin, I'd like to um, acknowledge Jean DeLea, who's here on behalf of Senator Kennedy and works on all these projects alongside of our office and Senator Kerry's office. It's my pleasure to join all of you today for this historic celebration. More importantly, however, is the message that I bring to you from Washington from your three federal legislators, Senator Kerry, Senator Kennedy, and Congressman Olver. <clears throat> it's our combined pleasure to celebrate this announcement with the City of Pittsfield, General Electric, the EPA, the State Department of Environmental Protection, and other state and federal agencies involved in this tireless effort. As your federal legislators, we applaud Judge Ponser's final court approval of the consent decree that will serve as a blueprint to the massive PCB cleanup of the Housatonic River and the GE plant site. The judge's ruling is a tremendous victory for Berkshire County residents and the Housatonic River and serves as the long-awaited pass we've been looking for to implement a cleanup plan that is comprehensive, fully accountable, and protective of public health and the environment. In Washington, our current administration has put the environment and the public health at the forefront of its initiatives. The Clinton-Gore administration proposed sweeping, sweeping new standards under the Clean Air and Clean Water Act that guarantee cleaner skies, healthier air, and limiting the adverse effects on public health and the environment. This year, our delegation has also sponsored legislation to direct the Secretary of Interior to conduct a study of the suitability of establishing an upper Housatonic Valley heritage area in the state of Connecticut and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which will work hand in hand with the reclamation efforts underway within the consent decree. We all agree that the Housatonic Valley is rich with, an envir with environmental and recreational treasures. These designations present our national experience through physical features and traditions for areas which are rich in natural, cultural, historic, and scenic resources. The current administration has also designed a Brownfields Redevelopment Initiative, much like that which is, a cons which is included in the consent decree, which is designed to empower states, communities, and other stakeholders in economic development work to, together in a timely manner to assess the potential these properties hold and then safely reclaim them in a level, to a level that will fulfill their potential. Many areas across the country that were once used for industrial and commercial purposes remain abandoned by contamination. Because of the comprehen comprehensive efforts driven by Mayor Doyle, City Council President Tom Hickey, Pittsfield, Pittsfield's dormant industrial site is on the fast track to being revitalized. Congressman Olver says it's a major boost to one of the most far-reaching cleanup plans of its kind and deserves local, state, and national acclaim. Congratulations to all of you that played a critical role in cr creating a consent decree that is complete and comprehensive. Congratulations also to Mayor Doyle and to Tom Hickey for your leadership in making sure that the residents' concerns and interests were, con were considered. 
Senator Kerry added that the consent decree represents a significant step in the effort to restore the environment and ensure the health of the community in Berkshire County. The formalized agreement will enable the parties to work together to clean up the Housatonic River and to continue to grow the Berkshire economy. It's a great day for Berkshire County, Senator Kennedy said. This groundbreaking agreement and the resulting cleanup and redevelopment of the GE facility and the Housatonic River are due in large part to the hard work of so many people dedicated to the environmental and economic future of the Berkshires. Mayor Doyle and officials at GE and the EPA should be commended for their hard fought battle to reach this historic agreement. Together, we look forward to working collectively collaboratively with PETA to develop the GE site with the Housatonic River Initiative to ensure that the river evaluation, cleanup, and restoration is efficient and substantial. And we all look forward to joining you as you celebrate the next milestone in this adventure. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. Thank you, Debbie. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce Sarah Hathaway, and she's going to be speaking on behalf of Senator Andrea Nusifaro. Hi, Senator Nusiforos, very sorry you couldn't be here in person today. He's actually working on remediating some banks, but it's, it's not river banks, it's a different kind of banks. Um, this is a wonderful step forward. Obviously, this has been a long process, and we have some years ahead of us. But Senator Nusiforos is very pleased to see this reaching a point of, of, of moving forward again. And as soon as we can start remediating the site, of course, is you know, not a day too soon. Um, he told me once of a game that um, was played here when he was a kid. I don't want to alarm anybody who used to live on Velma Avenue, but apparently it was called Conquer the Block. And you would go through the backyards and try and avoid barking dogs and get over fences. And I think a 240 acre block is a pretty big block to conquer, but with the mayor's help and PETA, and all the other players in the community. This is going to be a, a good game of Conquer the Block, and uh, hopefully there won't be too many fences and barking dogs on the way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Representing himself and the governor's office, our great state representative, Sean Kelly. Sean. <clears throat> Um, Mayor Doyle and um, City Council President Hickey and members of the City Council, um, my sincere congratulations to you. Um, you know that today, in many ways, or Friday marked really the beginning of a new chapter here for the City of Pittsfield. And um, there's no way it can be said that the City of Pittsfield isn't the um, crown jewel of the entire county. Uh, you cannot live and work, I don't think, in Berkshire County and not interact with this city. Um, you have to come here for certain things. It is, in, in many ways, the capital city. Um, I'm actually so pleased that we're going to beginning, begin a new chapter here, and an upbeat chapter about the economic uh, revi revitalization of the city of Pittsfield. Um, as a state legislator, I ran for office in 1990 at a time when Massachusetts was in a terrible, terrible economic slump. We had high unemployment rates that we'd never seen before. And we had really the highest cost of doing business in any state in the nation. And we weren't going to create one job if we continued down that road. And through the hard work of legislators like myself and a whole new group of people who bring a different thought process to state government, what it should or shouldn't be doing, we lost the m mantra of tax uh, and we began down a road of economic recovery. Um, you can see it all over the place now. Who would have ever thought people and businesses and outside sources would be investing in Pittsfield and North Adams, Massachusetts? As I stand here today, I can tell you people are eager to invest in the city of Pittsfield, in the city of North Adams, the entire Berkshire County. Um, I am so proud and pleased of that. Um, Pittsfield um, will begin this new, uh, I think, century uh, on a very, very positive mark. History will look kindly upon Mayor Doyle. It will look kindly upon uh, City Council President Hickey. And it will look very kindly upon its own um, Pittsfield representative, Peter Larkin, who I can tell you worked very, very hard to make sure this came about. This was his dream. This was the conclusion that he wanted. This is what he's gotten as somebody who was born and raised here in the city of Pittsfield. Um, I had an opportunity to bike uh, last Sunday morning up to the Boulders Recreation Area, northeast quadrant of Pittsfield. And as you sit there on the rocks and overlook the city, you can't believe how beautiful the city is. It's the most beautiful city in, in Massachusetts. 
And as you look at the mountain ridges, you can see that the top of the Crown Plaza sneaking through, and you can see the, the water tower of the uh, G, uh, GEAA uh, golf course. And it's hard to believe that that city is nestled in those mountains, but it is, and it's a beautiful and great city. And with the continued leadership that you have uh, here locally at the state level and at the federal level, it will continue, I think, um, to be a great city. My job, to be honest with you, as I hope to continue to be a legislator come next week, is to make sure that we never lapse back to being Taxachusetts, that we never lapse back to having the highest cost of doing business, that we remain committed to the business community, not because we like them or because some of us happen to be Republicans. It's because they create jobs, and jobs is what it's all about. So thank you all very much, and Mayor Doyle, congratulations to you. You deserve a great round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know Sean Kelly was a Republican. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce, speaking on behalf of Representative Peter Larkin, Heather McCusker. Heather, please. While the representative was in Springfield on Friday to witness firsthand the lodging of the consent decree by Judge Paz Panzer, he unfortunately had urgent business in the State House today and is unable to personally join the mayor in this public celebration. The representative has asked me to relay the following message to you. I am so thankful and proud to everyone involved in these negotiations for the commitment that they made to achieving a negotiated settlement that would clean up our environment now and that would give us back our industrial land that is so key to our economic future. I am also proud to have been able to play a small part in the events leading up to this historic occasion. This is Pittsfield's day. It is your day. Every man, woman, and child can similarly, similarly be proud of what we have accomplished. We have reclaimed not only our city, but our future as well. City leaders and the residents of Pittsfield will now decide the direction of this community into the next millennium and beyond. This is our community. Stand tall, stand proud of Pittsfield because communities across the country are looking at us right now saying, if they can do it, why can't we? Thank you to everyone who made this day a reality. State Representative Peter Larkin. Thank you. Thank you. The next person I'd like to introduce is uh, a person that was there through the whole uh, struggle in, in the back rooms with the meetings and uh, the, all the, the caucuses that each group had. Um, a guy that's originally from Pittsfield that now is back working in Pittsfield and representing uh, the EPA, and that's Dean Taylor Farrell. Dean, thanks for all the work you've done. Thanks. Very, very thanks. Um, I'll just be very brief. On behalf of Regional Administrator Mindy Luber and the rest of the EPA team, uh, we're very thankful for not only Jerry's comments today and all the other representatives' comments, but for the support and mostly the patience they showed during at least the last two years of negotiations. And uh, as I was reminded last Friday with Judge Ponzer, there were a lot of times during that negotiations where EPA was ready to walk away, and in fact, I think we did at least on two occasions. And uh, we were reminded very quickly by both the mayor's office and the state and federal reps that uh, we should get back, back there and back to work. So this deal never would have happened without, without Mayor Doyle and the other representatives keep, keep pushing us and keep us focusing on the real issues, which were the, the people of Pittsfield and the people of Berkshire County. Um, EPA would also like to say, you know, reiterate that we're very pleased with the judge's decision last Friday, and it's going to start a whole slate of cleanup activities. In fact, it's going to continue activities because, as Mayor Doyle said, there's already many underway. And that we look forward to working with everyone, including GE, the Citizens Coordinating Council, public officials, the public at large, the interveners, and all the advocacy groups, because it's going to take everybody working together to make sure the cleanup gets done. Uh, efficiently and properly. And also EPA pledges to support certainly Mary, Mayor Doyle with uh, any redevelopment efforts, even though it's primarily the city's issue. But if there's any way EPA can facilitate that 
and any approvals that we need to do, we will certainly do that in a timely fashion. And uh, that's about all, other than to congratulate Mayor Doyle again. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. We're ra waiting for uh, State Representative Hodgkins. He's not here yet, but uh, we're going to close up. And Chris and the rest of our um, representatives and our senator uh, were a very, very important part uh, of this settlement. Every single one of those people worked hard, regardless of what their views were in the beginning. All their views were united in the end, and that's the important part of this whole thing. Again, I can't emphasize enough uh, how proud I am to be the mayor of the city of Pittsfield during this, uh, is what I feel is a time in history that Pittsfield finally has been, we're, we've created a national model, and it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, we always have our naysayers out there that every time something's created here, it's uh, because something bad happened. Well, that's not the case at all. And again, I want to thank each and every one of the people in this room and the people in the viewing audience that have supported this. It's, it's monumental. Uh, it's going to draw a lot of attention to our city as far as cleanup efforts go throughout the, um, not only the state of Massachusetts, but obviously uh, throughout the nation. We didn't deal just with local officials from the state. We dealt from uh, Washington here. Uh, and they were all in the room. They were all at the same table. And they all had the courage to make the courageous decisions. And I respect each and every one of them for that. Uh, to Dean and the EPA, uh, he's right. There was a lot of arguments. There was a lot of walking away from each other. Uh, my friend Tom Hickey knows that uh, our new friend in the parking lot next to Mince Levin, we had to, we, we won't call it bribes, but we gave him little trinkets so we always could get a nice parking place because we had nowhere to park down there. <laughs> but um, it worked out for everybody's benefit. I'm ready to, I'm ready to see PETA grow and develop and get, get on the move. Uh, it's been working very, very hard, but now we have the red light. Uh, the fight is over, the, um, the war is over. It's time to get everybody back together as a community. Uh, I think we uh, have made tremendous steps in doing that already. And uh, I'm ready to get it going and, and create some, uh, some new jobs in this area to clean our river, to get Silver Lake done, to be the centerpiece into our new plant, to have our recreational facilities across from Ray Delgallo's on the east side. They're happier than heck to have that. Dean was happy to know about that too, huh, Dean? He's thinking about buying Ray Delgallo's now. <laughs> Business is good. But again, thanking each and every one of you for being here today. I cannot thank you enough for the two years of support that you've given me. And um, I would also like to mention Beth's here because she put up with it for two years. And uh, there's been some good days and some bad days. I think the, I, I just like to tell you, tell one story publicly, and uh, she'll probably get mad, but I think it's kind of important that I do. Uh, before September, I think, Dean, it was maybe in June, negotiations had fallen apart again. Our state U.S. senators, our state senators, and our representatives stepped forward one more time and said, put it back together. Well, I drove home from Boston that night. It was probably about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock, we get home. And uh, I had called Beth from the car phone and said, no, it's over. I'm depressed. You know, we're driving home again. I mean, really depressed, like you want to go out and fight with somebody. So I came home, and Beth made me one of my favorite uh, Jack Daniels and Cokes. And I'm sitting on the couch, and the phone rings. Beth said, Jerry, it's for you. I picked up the phone, and uh, the gentleman on the other, one, other end of the phone went, Jerry, Ted Kennedy here. I went, Ted, Senator. I didn't know what to say. I says, I'm just sitting here having a Jack Daniels and Coke. He says, I wish I was, he said. <laughs> but those are the type of calls at 10 o'clock at night that you get. I mean, that's how concerned uh, our senators and, and our representatives are and how important this was, not only to, to Pittsfield, but to this county and to the state. Without the help of every one of those 23 people that signed on that dotted line, this would not have happened. And without your persistence, the pushing that you've did, the letters, the calls, uh, the meetings that you, you folks had to attend, um, it's, it did not go unnoticed. I wish there was more I could do to say thank you, but I think the reward in the end will be a re revitalized 
plant in our center, center city with a revitalized economic base that's going to make this whole county grow again. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? I hope not. Go ahead, <laughs> Jack. Uh, Priest, you will begin to get some cash. Uh, I believe it's one min million a year for mm -hmm. 10 years. Any indication as to what that cash will be used for? Is it earmarked or is it unencumbered? It's unencumbered and it's for economic development purposes outside of the GE facility judged by the mayor. So it must be used for a development purpose. It can't be used to pay down debt, or it can't be used. It can be used for whatever, whatever we want it to be used, whatever I want it to be used for. But that's not going to be the case. It's going to be used for economic development purposes outside of the realm of PETA, meaning the GE plant. Very good. The, uh, you mentioned that uh, GE will start demolition, wide-scale demolition. When do you expect that to begin? Well, I think uh, that the. The actual, a lot of the pre-work has been done. I'm not going to answer the question for General Electric, but I know that they've done a lot of research. And GE, uh, to their credit, I think, I don't know who's noticed this, has already taken down the overpass that went over uh, East Street, have taken down the oil tanks, have taken down the smokestacks that were over at GE. And this was all outside of the consent decree. But I know dealing with Mike Carroll and uh, the rest of his team over at GE, they've done a lot of legwork on that. So I. I would think after, if you wanted to refer that question to GE, they'd be better suited to answer it, Larry. Could I ask the EPA gentleman? Sure, Dean. I just wondered why this was done, um, not as a super fund issue, but uh, independently negotiated, and whether the uh, citizens and the city were as well protected as they might have been in that. You can join us. <coughs> The answer to the last part is they definitely were as protected as they would have been. Um, that was one of the issues that came up in the court. The situation was it was being regulated by EPA under a different regulation called RECRA. We did propose it to go to the Superfund listing, and a lot of the staff and a lot of the resources and a lot of the money that EPA has used in the last three years is Superfund money. So there really is very little difference. Um, between whether you wanted to call it a Superfund site or not. It's not officially listed, but we did almost the exact same process uh, that would have happened. And the other thing that Jerry said that is a reason that we, among the reasons that we didn't push to finalize the site is that it probably would have led to litigation over five or 10 years should GE have decided to fight it vigorously. And if we could achieve the same result through negotiation, then that was, uh, that was the course that we were directed to proceed on. Plus, I was against Superfund. <laughs> I, I would be more than happy to do that. Um, and, and Dean's right; they did use some Superfund funds for this. But when this, when this whole, when it came to a head a couple of years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, I know I was still in the city council, and at that time, uh, my friend John DeVillers had headed the EPA, and I, I don't think that they realized at the time that there was a lot of other people out there other than um, activists for Superfund. And we were caught off guard a as elected officials that this is the way they were going to go uh, automatically. And we, and we, uh, we fought that to say, no, we don't want to be listed as a Superfund fight. We, we think that you know, we can work something out here. Plus, as we talked earlier today, I think the number, and Dean, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, there was $1.5 uh, billion dollars in the national Superfund account at the time. And we can talk about numbers all over the place, whether it's 150 million or 700 million. Somewhere in between there is going to be the actual cost of this total cleanup. And if anybody in their right mind th thinks for one minute that the city of Pittsfield, on a national level, was going to get one third of the total national. Uh, Treasury's money for Superfund, let's rethink that one. And it wasn't going to work out. Everybody knew that, and we weren't even listed at that point. And there's 1,300 or 13,000 
other cities that have been on this list waiting. Uh, and it just wasn't going to happen. And the litigation alone, as Dean alluded to, would, would have been substantially uh, longer than it was with a, with a high price tag that comes with that. And I didn't think it was right to bear that cost on the backs of the taxpayers because the EPA and the DEP and the GE weren't just going to keep giving us money to fight against them. That's for sure. Um, so we all came back. We had a, a lot of meetings, and they were open meetings, discussed our differences and our problems. And to John DeViller's credit at the time, uh, really changed his position to say, okay, let's try it. And, and we did try it, and we tried it and tried it and tried it. And, and even when it was broke a few times, he fixed it. But we feel, again, that this is, a, this is something that's immediate. That's the, that's the key to this. It's immediate. The, the litigation, the Superfund, all those uh, designations could have went on and on for years and years and years. But what we have now is immediate cleanup. Number one, our public health is being addressed, our public health issues as far as PCB contamination is being addressed immediately. As far as the river goes, as far as the residential cleanup goes, as far as Allendale School goes, and all the other little uh, associate, they're not little, by the way, uh, monetarily, associated um, items that come along with that. It's immediate. That GE didn't have to do that. So that's important to know. I rambled on a little bit with. <laughs> Are you comfortable that this consent decree addresses a potential for future hotspots at the uh, GE site? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's covenants that address each and every one of those issues. Any new uh, um, found source obviously goes right back to uh, the standard EPA and DEP uh, regulations. I noticed that State Representative Hodgkins just came in. Chris, would you like to say a couple of words? Uh, we, we're waiting for you very patiently. <laughs> I was really just killing time waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just I want to congratulate you on your efforts, and uh, certainly I think that uh, uh, those in the environmental community that were concerned uh, when we withdrew from the consent decree, I think now they all realize that when we did withdraw, we were able to extricate from this agreement some further protection for the citizens, but I'm here to congratulate you and the City Council on all their work, and uh, but more importantly, uh, this takes away all the barriers of opportunity that you want to pursue here in the City of Pittsburgh. So I look forward to working with you on this. Well, Chris, thank you. And I, you weren't here, but I thanked uh, yourself and the rest of the delegation for the hard work that went into this and coming out of this as a unified group. Thank you. In regards to Mr. Kuro, all I can say is uh, I've been advised by Mr. Kuro's attorney not to talk about Mr. Kuro. Um, and the council president and I, all we will say is we did a lot of work on behalf of Mr. Kuro. Did, did End of quote. Did commercial properties get a fair shake? Even though he says, for example, his property at 11 parts of the he, he still has every... They, the business owners, still have every opportunity to, to sue GE, to do whatever they want. They also have the right to have their property cleaned at no expense to them to meet commercial standards just as any other place throughout the city of Pittsfield would. And one more important point is there's a functioning business in that building right now, as is the one next door. In terms of PETA, right now it's kind of an organization without a head. Is that going to Excuse change? Me? PETA right now has no, <coughs> has no director. Mm -hmm. Is that going to change anytime soon? Well, they got a part-time director over, over there. I think he's doing a pretty good job. We don't have to pay him. I like that. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. That uh, should be changed uh, very, very soon. Uh, the issue is we didn't know when the consent decree was going to be signed. I mean, we, we went a year when the... Um, answering questions at the intervener status level that delayed this since September of 1999. Uh, that's when the original um, um, deal was made. And it should have been sent to the judge within a couple of months from there. But then, you know, nothing, I don't mean this negatively, but people had other questions that needed to be answered uh, that the judge had to 
respond to, our attorneys had to respond to, the EPA had to respond to, and GE had to respond to, so it caused quite a delay. But um, there's been several meetings. The PETA group, a lot of those members are here, have met right along, and uh, we think that uh, this will be dealt with shortly. It has to be dealt with shortly. Especially when Mr. Carroll starts wiring us millions, you know, we, we ought to have somebody to take care of that. Someone to sign the check. Yeah. No, somebody to accept the check. <laughs> they sign it, I accept it. <laughs> who that person will be, the full time director? Right, at, right now, I don't know for sure. What's the status of EV Worldwide? Well, I met with uh, EV Worldwide um, a Friday before I went to the meeting. Obviously, a lot relied on the decision that was made Friday. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we now have a timetable. I've, tell, I've talked with uh, Tom Hickey several occasions about this. Once the judge um, signed that document, it gave us stability. So we know exactly what we got to do and what type of time frame we have to do it in. Uh, there should be more on that uh, within the next couple of weeks. EV has put employees to work. both here and in Ringwald, New Jersey. Okay. Well, again, thank you very much, and I think it's a proud day for all of us. Thank you.